Okay, so in this screencast, I'm going to talk about the API docs tab of the Dream Factory admin console. So API docs are super important. Uh, every service that you connect to in the services tab are automatically documented uh, and ready to use. And this is really important. So instead of having to write your own REST APIs for, say, a SQL or NoSQL database, and there are a bunch of other options as well, Dream Factory automatically generates not only API documentation, but the actual endpoints themselves are ready to use. And you can just start building your application without writing any REST API at all. You can obviously write a custom service if you need that, but in most cases, uh, you won't. You can just use the API that's ready to go. So here you're looking at all of the APIs that are available. We connected to some data sources here, and the API docs, after we save these connections, just get built. They're automatically done. Uh, so what I want to cover is just a few. Remember, you can connect to SQL, you can connect to NoSQL files, email, push notifications, remote web services. You can even build your own custom APIs. We won't cover all of that today, but you will see how the API docs work with a simple example of a SQL database. So here we see a list of a bunch of different services that we've added, and we'll look at this DB service. And what you'll see, if you're familiar with um, the tool here called Swagger, this is built into Dream Factory. So Swagger is a great open source uh, API documentation uh, technology, and it's embedded in Dream Factory here. So here you'll see, uh, for example, DB, and you can click on any of these to open them. So I clicked on DB, and I'm looking at a bunch of endpoints. Now the endpoints are pretty easy to understand. They're parameterized. So for example, table name is whatever table name you pass in if you wanted to retrieve, say, the table definition for that particular table. So that there are, for SQL, there are about 40, a little over 40 endpoints. And because these are abstracted, it, you clearly see that there are many, many endpoints available. So if you had 1,000 tables, you've got 40,000 endpoints roughly uh, at your disposal to use uh, without writing any API at all. So when you click on any of these actions, we'll look at a simple example. Let's look at get records. So the API is slash db underscore table and then whatever table name I pass in. If you click on a verb like get, you'll see a bunch of implementation notes that are automatically provided there. The events generated, the response uh, class, and all of that good stuff. And where it gets interesting is looking at the parameters. So you can return either XML or JSON in this particular API call. And things that are in bold are required. So we've got, let's see, a contact table here. And we can put that in. And then what's really useful before you write your application is to look at all of the parameters. So the way that Dream Factory works is it has a, a base path and then a series of uh, parameters that you can add to the end of any of your API calls. So you can get very, very sophisticated uh, API calls by combining any of these parameters in any way that you want. So essentially anything that you can do with a straight SQL call, you can encode directly into your API call and do very sophisticated queries. So the best thing to do is to start looking at these. We'll do a very simple example. I will go and set a limit of 10 records on the contact and get some data back just to look at it so we can see some JSON. To see this working live in your database, just click Try It Out. And you'll see both the request URL here so base URL, API, v2, db, and then our contact. And then again, after the question mark here, you can have as many parameters as you want. So I put a limit of 10, and I got back the first 10 records. And you can see the JSON returned here. And then what you can do is build up more sophistication and play with all of these. You've got filter parameters. You can order. You can group. You can offset for pagination. You can include a record count, pass in the IDs that you want. You can uh, either continue or roll back. There are a bunch of things here. And for each of these, you should just see uh, how it works and play with it. And it's pretty self-explanatory. So a very simple example, let's say I wanted to drill down more, and I only want to get records where first name is starts with the letter J, or something like that, very much like SQL. I can do that. And let's also say that I want to have uh, related all related objects, or related fields in this case, for a particular contact record. So that'll pull all relationships by foreign key. Then I can try that out. So this is going to get uh, 10 records, people whose first name starts with John, and then it's going to get some relationships from other tables. So this is some contact information for each contact. So we're spanning multiple tables with a single API call. And that's all encoded in the API call. So contact, filter, and then ampersand, like, first name J, 
the limit, and then you see the related. So you can string together as many of these parameters as you want. So with a fairly small number of endpoints, you get very sophisticated behavior. Now the rest of these API calls uh, you can look at. So SQL is really at the center of it all. Uh, NoSQL, such as MongoDB, looks very much like SQL. It's a subset of endpoints who don't have relationships, but the way that it works is really identical to SQL, highly abstracted and easy to use and easy to learn. You've got file storage, so you can pass in and create, read, update, delete folders and files very easily to a file system. And then a bunch of these are built in. So you'll see email here, you'll see a system API, and a really important one is also user. So this is managing your end users if you want to do self-registration, managing session tokens, all of that, and you can explore these very easily in the API docs. Uh, so that's about it. A uh, very high-level overview of API docs. To really go into the details, you'll want to hop on over to wiki.dreamfactory.com. Check out the tutorials. There's one a section called Using the REST API. This goes through a bunch of use cases of how to manipulate things like users, your SQL data, SQL-specific use cases like posting data to multiple tables with joins, that kind of thing, querying SQL views and stored procedures and functions, and then file manipulation, email, push notifications, and then connecting to a remote web service, which is basically any RESTful API you can connect to a Dream Factory, and Dream Factory provides a great security role management model on top of those remote web services. So to drill into these details, check that out. Uh, pretty easy to learn and should be really helpful to just play with the API docs before you start writing your application. So that's it. Uh, check out our other tutorials on the Dream Factory YouTube channel. And also check out the documentation, wiki.dreamfactory.com, and check out our forum as well, community.dreamfactory.com. Hope this is helpful. Thanks.